Valorant has been out for quite some time, and if you're one of the lucky people who have finally got a key, you may have already found out the hard way that this isn't your typical run and gun shooter. Similar to CSGO and Overwatch, it requires a lot of gun skill, teamwork, and game awareness to get good at the game. In this video, I'll cover all the tips that will help you get better at the game in no time. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. First up are abilities. It's like 50% of the game to learn the abilities, so make sure you learn the in and outs of all of them. Learn what purpose they serve, meaning what exactly does each ability do, and how to use each one to your team's advantage. Play around with all of them until you find your sweet spot, mine is currently within the crusty ass dreads of Phoenix, but you should have at least a general idea of each agent and how their abilities work in the game. Knowing who has what ability is also very useful. As you can see in this example, I knew that the boom bot was from Rays, so even after I killed the Sage, I knew to peek again because the Rays had to be close by. Another crucial tip to learning the abilities is learning what sounds each one makes. Each ability makes a distinct sound, whether it be the snapping of Phoenix Fireball, the alert of Cypher's Tripwire, or even the sound of Sova's dart hitting and scanning the surface. Area. Ultimates have even louder cues, in some cases you'll even be able to visually tell when someone used theirs, for example, Omen's teleportation turns the minimap into black flames, but each agent will perform a voice cue loud enough for nearby enemies to hear it, so don't think you're being too sneaky when you pull off your most powerful ability. Quick ultimate tips, if you hear or see Viper's ultimate, you will know that she's most likely within the smoke as she has to stay within it to keep it up. Phoenix's ult will set a checkpoint to which he will return, so if you hear this, Joke's over! You're dead! Make sure to try to flank and see where he set his ultimate so you can kill him once his ultimate has timed out. And then steal his up because you're a fucking alpha. And lastly, Sage's ultimate allows for revival, so if you hear the cue, either rush before the revive player is able to move around, or sit back and expect an additional player. And the last tip on abilities is seeing whether or not they are aggressive or conservative abilities. Agents like Phoenix, Jet, and Rays have aggressive abilities that will help get key kills on attacking rounds, while other agents such as Cypher, Viper, and Sage should sit back on defense and play a little bit more conservative. This isn't always the case as people like Phoenix can definitely hold down a site, as well as people like Viper can do really aggressive pushes, but overall this is just a general guideline that a lot of beginners will definitely take advantage in learning. The next group of tips is regarding guns. Guns in this game are very similar to that in CSGO, and if you're anything like me, that means that you don't fucking understand how it works at all. But that's okay, because it only takes a couple of games to get used to it. First up is recoil. The first couple of bullets hit exactly where your crosshairs are in a little bunch. After 4 or 5 bullets, you will see your bullets quickly go up and to the right or to the left very fast, so make sure to pull down and aim respectively. Hit your first couple of bursts directly where you wish to hit, and then adjust down the more shots you end up needing. Aiming down sights is also going to make a great difference in accuracy, but you move much slower, so be careful to ADS only when necessary. Also, ADSing on LMGs seems to be the most accurate, so if you're like me and come from a game like Siege where bullets hit where your crosshair are, then just ADS with the Odin. I swear to god, it is amazing. And to ensure that all of your bullets are hitting exactly where the enemies are, make sure your crosshair placement is on point. Stop looking at the ground. There is not going to be a fucking slurp juice or gold scar. One thing that separates bad players from good ones are those who pre-aim in areas that enemies are usually located. That means peeking corners with your crosshair to where you expect the enemies to be. Check your corners as well as common hiding spots too, many people love to hide in tight little corners in main choke points, so clear those sections out by pre-aiming them. All the guns are also very useful in Valorant unlike its competitor CSGO, and that's one of my favorite things about the game. While they are all good, try to follow these guidelines. On saving rounds, choose a pistol of choice, most accurate being Ghost and Sheriff, while shorter range combat will prefer the Frenzy or Shorty. After saving up, SMGs are great for close to medium range, closer range being the Stinger, and more medium ranges being the Spectre. Shotguns are for up close and personal bum rushes, and ARs are overall the best guns to use in almost every situation. LMGs are better for longer ranges as well as holding back multiple enemies without reloading, and snipers are for longer distances such as holding long lines of sight in between bomb sites and spawn. Guns are also able to wall bang most door and window frames as well as boxes that are near the objective. Double doors can also be wall banged once the metal is shot off, so take your shot if you know if they're behind cover. 
And the last tip is regarding money. You can't buy these guns if you don't have any money, so saving your money is very crucial. If you find yourself losing a lot of rounds, you're not going to see a lot of money coming in, meaning that you won't be able to afford some of the better guns in the game. When your team is low on money, save by either purchasing the Ghost or the Sheriff and playing a bit more conservative until you're either able to take out one of the enemies and take their guns, or if that doesn't happen, at least you have enough money for next round to buy a useful utility. Next up is what I find to be one of the most important parts of the game, sound. Walking versus sprinting is like Sonic versus whatever the fuck this is. 9.9 .9 out of 10 times you should be walking because it makes absolutely no sound. You can quick peek short corners and not make any sound, but once you sprint, you will be able to be heard from a mile away. Basic actions also have sounds. Like stated previously, abilities have sounds that you can hear, but so do basic animations such as reloading and planting or diffusing. Get familiar with these sounds as they can help you gather information without putting your neck into the actual fight. Different materials also help with different sounds. Once you get familiar with the map, you'll be able to tell exactly where enemies' locations are based on the footsteps they make. Metal, wood, grass, they all make different footstep sounds. Enemies falling from higher heights, as well as window frames such as heaven, will make distinctive drop sounds that you will be able to use to your advantage, knowing that they have dropped from such heights. And as all these sounds are very important to making you a better player, make sure you have a good pair of headphones. You can save your money and get a budget pair, but I guarantee you that if you get this pair, it will be the best $150 you've ever spent in your entire life. I'll leave the link in the description for anyone who's interested. The next group of tips is regarding teamwork. Combining abilities is one of the greatest tips that anyone could ever give you. Abilities can go together like peanut butter and your dog and your cock. Combine these abilities and you can create some really sick combos. Communication is also what really makes the team work. You and your teammates should be always talking about where enemies are located, who's planning on going where, and what the overall game plan is. Here are just a couple times where my teammates have really helped me win rounds. Gone. Oh, watch your right, watch your right, watch your right. No. He's on that left side. He's like. Oh, yeah. In seconds left. 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 Oh. Imposter kill. <laughs> Down you go. I have to change those on top. There's one top of the boxes still though. Yeah. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. Oh. It's gonna be one on the box, on the box. Still got it. Uh, right, 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 right. Right there. Dude. Nice. Good clutch. There's one right there, Yusuf. Just one in the corner. Dead! Yusuf, below you. Below you. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Blocking sight! As a team, you also have to learn how to play objective together. If you want to win more matches, you can achieve this by either killing all the enemies or by planting or defusing the spike. Learn to play objective rather than seek out to kill everyone. Sometimes you have no time to plant, therefore you have to kill all the remaining defenders. But if you're defending and they planted, your job is to kill all of them, or at least stall out a defuse before they can kill you. Occasionally, the spike carrier will get killed in a weird position, in which as a defender, it's your job to determine whether or not to defend the spike itself, or defend the bomb realizing that attackers will eventually pick it up. On the other hand, if this happens to you and you're attacking, you have to either pick up the spike ASAP and plant out a bomb, or kill all the enemies before the timer runs out. Organized pushing is also another fundamental. This goes hand in hand with communication. If you all plan on planting at B for example, there is no need to have half the team go B and half the team go A. Organize your pushes so that your abilities help one another. For example, send out Sova's drone as your teammates push, to direct the crosshair of the enemy away from where they're entering. The next group of tips are regarding maps. You have to learn the bomb sites, common places people hide, and choke points or lines of sight. Map knowledge is key in almost every FPS and this game is no different. It also wouldn't help to learn where the main rotation areas are so you can pull off that nasty ass flank. There are tons of videos of cool spots in which you can use abilities to get weird angles in the map, 
but overall just learn the basics of the maps by playing the game more and more. In regards to maps, positioning is also very important. For example, if you're watching long, you are most likely going to be wanting to play a sniper role. Another good example is that if you're playing Omen, Brimstone, Jet, or Viper, using your smokes effectively to block off key choke points is crucial to successful pushes, as well as blocking off sites to make defending that much easier. Knowing how the map is structured will help you place these smokes. Holding down OBJ as either a defender or even as an attacker who just planted is also crucial. As long as you play your role, I'm sure you'll be fine. Next up is a topic of predictability and organization. Starting with organization, pushing as a team is one of the best things you can do. In this example, you can see that I am right next to the bomb site in which they planted the spike. However, I don't just go out and try to kill everyone as I know that my team is making a flank. So I wait and hold down the area until I know that my team will push with me as we push as a team and win the round. In terms of predictability, bait and switch is something that I've taken from Siege and other games and applied to this game and it works just as well. Bait and switch basically means you will either make the enemy think that you're going somewhere and go the other way, or you can change the pace in which you're moving to make an unpredictable push for the enemy. Playing spike is also a predictability type of tip. If the spike is somewhere in your bomb site, you sure as hell are going to know that the enemies are going to expect you to be watching it. So don't play in predictable spots where it's very obvious that you're just going to be hiding and holding down spike. And the last tip that I can give you all is patience. Patience is crucial to being a good player, whether it means being patient to improve or being patient within the actual gameplay. The learning curve for this game is quite large, so don't feel bad if you don't get it right away. I personally am not the best player by any means. Your iron three. What the fuck? But I hope that some of these tips have helped you and maybe will even make you a better player. If you learned anything new or just enjoyed the video, I hope you guys did. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And make sure also to comment what you guys want to see from here on out. If there's any tips that you guys want me to make a more in-depth tutorial about, please let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, let's dash to the next video.